Alright, welcome to the last video in A-1. In this video, we're going to be discussing outliers. Outliers are going to be extreme data points that are extremely higher or lower than the rest of your data points. Now, if you're going to run into trouble in this lesson, it's probably going to be with the outliers. This is the part that throws the most people off because we have a tendency to just want to eyeball things and say, okay, yeah, that number is really high or really low. It must be an outlier. Or I don't see anything that's really high or really low, so there must not be an outlier. However, we actually have a mathematical test that is going to help tell whether something is officially an outlier or not. So that's the one part that you're going to have to remember to do. But you're not just eyeballing it, that you actually have to figure it out mathematically. So we do have some steps written down for you to test for outliers. The very first thing we're going to have to do is to find the interquartile range. Once we find the interquartile range, we're going to need to multiply it by 1.5. After we do that, we're going to take what we get in step 2, and we're going to subtract it from Q1. Anything that we get that's lower than that in our data set is going to be an outlier. And we're also going to take what we got in step 2, and we're going to add it to the third quartile, and any numbers higher than that are going to be considered an outlier. So that sounds kind of confusing when we're just talking about abstractly without a problem in front of us. So let's just go ahead and look at example 8, and go through this process together. So if I'm looking at example 8, we're asked to define any outliers. So the first thing I want to do is I need to find the interquartile range. So I'm just going to do this off to the side where I have a little bit more room here. And remember to find the interquartile range, the first thing we had to do was to write our numbers in order. So I have a 40, I have a 72, I have an 81, I have an 86, I have another 86, I'm going to have a 93, a 97, and a 100. So I need to find my interquartile range, and to do that I'm going to first have to find the median. So I'm going to cross out from the beginning and the end, the beginning and the end, and I'm going to be stuck between the two 86s. Now since our 86s are the same there, we don't really have to worry about adding them together and dividing by 2 we know that our median is going to be 86. So what we need to do now is to find our Q1 and Q3. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to look at the bottom half of the data. I'm going to cross out and cross out. And then I'm left with 72 and 81. So I'm going to have to add those together and divide by 2. And when I do that, I'm going to get 76.5. So that's going to be my Q1. 76.5. Then the next thing I'm going to need to do is find Q3. So I'm going to do that with the second half of the data. I'm going to cross out the 86 and the 100. And I'm going to be left between 93 and 97. So I'm going to have to add those together and divide by 2. And that's going to give me 95. So the last thing I need to do is subtract those. 95 minus 76.5, and that's going to give me 18.5. So that is step one. So I have now found my interquartile range. So the next thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to multiply the interquartile range that I just found by 1.5. So step two, I'm going to take 18.5, I'm going to multiply it by 1.5, and that is going to give me 27.75. All right, so that is step two. The next thing I need to do is to subtract that 27.75 from what I got for Q1. So Q1, remember, was 76.5, and I'm going to subtract the 27.75, and that is going to give me 48.75. So I need to look to see if I have any numbers that are lower than that. In this case, I do. My 40 is lower than that, so I know that 40 is going to be an outlier. So I know I have a lower outlier. I now need to check for a higher outlier. So I'm going to do step 4. I'm going to add what we got in step 2, which was the 27.75. I'm going to add that to my Q3, which was 95. So I'm going to do that down here. I'm going to do... 95 plus 27.75 and when I add those together I'm going to get 122.75 and I look to see if I have any numbers that are higher than that. 
My highest number was a 100, so I don't have any outliers on that side. So my only outlier is going to be 40. All right, so this is a long, tedious process. It is going to be a little cramped trying to do it on this example. If you want while you're working this problem, you're more than welcome to go ahead and get some notebook paper and do your work on that. But let's go ahead and look at example 8b as well. And we'll do this step, this process one more time. So step one, remember, is to find IQR. So what we first want to do is put these numbers in order. So I'm going to have 2, 7, 12, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19, and 25. First thing I'm going to want to do is to find my median. So I'm going to cross out on either side. 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. And this time we're going to find our median right smack dab in the middle of 15. So Q2 is going to be 15. And I'll just label that there. So now I have to find it on either side. So I have to find Q1. I'm going to cross out and cross out. I'm left with 7 and 12. So I'm going to have to add those together. Divide by 2. And that's going to give me 9.5 as my Q1. And then I need to work on the other side. I'm going to cross out and cross out, and I'm left between 18 and 19. I'm going to add those together and divide by 2, and that's going to give me that Q3 is going to be equal to 18.5. So I'm going to take 18.5, and I'm going to subtract the 9.5, and that is going to give me 9. So my IQR is 9. So now I'm ready for step two. And in step two, and I'm just going to move the little camera box off to the side for now so that we can have a better visual on this. All right, but for step two, we're going to take 1.5 and we're going to multiply it times the IQR we just got, which was 9. So when we multiply those together, it's going to give us 13.5. The next thing I need to do in step three is I'm going to take Q1 minus that 13.5 we just got. So I'm going to take 9.5 minus 13.5, and that's going to give me negative 4. Now, I didn't have any negative numbers in my data set, so I already know I'm not going to have an outlier that's going to be lower than that. Um, but just to double check, my lowest number was 2, so I don't have, no, I don't have any outliers that way. All right, our last step is going to be step 4, and we have to take our Q3 and add that 13.5. So when I do that, my Q3 up here was 18.5. So 18.5 plus 13.5 is going to give me 32. So I check my data set to see whether I have any numbers bigger than 32. My biggest was 25, so I'm not going to have any outliers. I didn't have any outliers below or above. So on this problem, we're going to have no outliers. All right, you guys give the two you try problems a chance. Make sure that you check your answers, and then go ahead and work on the practice. If you need help, let your teachers know. We'll be glad to help you out.